Hey everyone, today I'm going to be cutting the wiffle ball, the sketch right here. And I just started off by creating a new document and titling it. So let's just get right to it. I'm going to start by cutting the top half of the ball right here. So if you just cut it down the middle, the top half is what I'm going to be cutting. And I'm going to sketch out a quarter of it so it's just more efficient. So let's create a new sketch based off of the front plane. And if you can see right here, there's two different circles. There's an inner circle with a radius of 28, an outer circle, which has a diameter of 60, so the radius is going to be 30. And there's the thickness of the ball in between. So we're going to start by sketching out our inner radius right here. And we'll set one of the lines, we'll dimension it to 28 for our radius. And we'll set the lines equal to each other so that the bottom line also equals 28 millimeters without the hassle of actually dimensioning it separately. And next, we want to create our 30, radi our 30 millimeter radius. And instead of creating a new longer line and setting the entire line to 30 millimeters, we can just add a small line right here. Make sure it's set as an actual line, not a construction, because we'll be making the actual ball out of it. We're gonna dimension it to two millimeters. So it adds up to 30, 28 plus two is 30. And we'll, again, we're going to equal these lines together. And to make the actual sphere shape, we want to make two arcs connecting these points right here. And we want to make sure that the arcs are centered on the center hole, the center point right here, excuse me. So now it creates a shaded region where everything is dimensioned. And to make the actual 3D shape of our top half, we're going to revolve this shaded region right here. And we'll revolve it around this line. So set this line as the revolve axis and it'll create a nice dome shape, it's hollowed out. And if we see this third sketch right here, we see that there's a pattern with the holes. There's one center hole, there's four on the outside, the second row, and there's eight on the third row. And we can see that there's five that are equally distanced for half of the ball. So we know that there's 10 equally distanced around the entire ball. So let's just start by creating our center hole at the very top. I'm going to hide this part right here. I'm going to create a new sketch based off this top plane. We'll make a hole and we'll dimension it to 10 millimeters. As you can see with this right here. And to make the actual hole in our shape, we're going to extrude this sketch that we just made. We're going to set it to remove instead of new. Make sure that it's in the right direction. Click this drop down. Instead of blind, we want it to be up to face. And we're going to select our merge scope as part one, this part that we just made, and up to face, this outer face. So now our sketch is extruded out and it creates a perfect hole in our shape. And now that we have this center hole, we can start by creating our outer holes. 
And to do that, we're going to find the circular pattern. And we'll make sure it's set to feature pattern instead of part pattern. We'll collect this. Excuse me, we're going to select our center circle as our features to pattern and our axis of pattern. We want to make sure that there's a path for our circle to follow when it's being patterned. So we'll show sketch one and we can see this line right here. And now our circle is going to be patterned along this path and we'll set it to 180 because we only have half of a ball and we know that there's five equally spaced per half for 180 degrees. And instead of setting it to five, we also need to account for this center hole right here because it repeats itself. So we'll actually set our instance count to six, make sure it's centered and apply per, apply per instance, excuse me. And now we have our pattern that we want. We also want to make it go vertically. So we're gonna create another sketch on our right plane. And I'll hide our part for now. And I'll create a new sketch. And we only need the outer radius, so we'll just make a dimension onto our first sketch that we made so it goes automatically to 30 millimeters without having to dimension it. And I'll set the lines equal to each other. And for the actual path, because that's why we're making this sketch, we're going to create an arc. Make sure it's centered to our origin. And I'm just going to set it as a construction. So now we have this line right here. Once we show our part, we can see that it creates a path for our feature to be our circle to be patterned along. We're going to click circular pattern again, feature pattern. Gonna select our center point, center hole, excuse me, and our axis of pattern is going to be that arc that we just sketched. And we'll have the same numbers as before. Make sure it's centered and apply per instance. Now we have it horizontally and vertically, and we need to make sure that we have all eight holes on our third row. So this time we're going to click circular pattern and instead of feature pattern, we're gonna actually click face pattern. And for our faces to pattern, we're gonna click the interface of our hole. And for our axis, we're going to click this bottom circle at the very bottom. And we know that there's eight equally spaced, so we're gonna set this to eight, instance count to eight. And now we have the pattern that we want. And to make our bottom half, we're going to actually mirror this entire part across the top plane. So our mirror plane is going to be the top plane. We're gonna make sure it's set to new because we're going to be actually rotating this bottom part right here because if we see in our sketch, the third row holes for both halves, they are not supposed to line up like they do for our ball right now. So we'll transform this bottom half and we're going to actually rotate it along this axis right here, this line. So it doesn't actually move from its position, just rotates. And if we want it in the middle of, if we want the holes to be in the middle of the holes from the top half, our third row, we're gonna make sure that that's 360 divided by 16, cause there's eight holes, so that's going to be 22.5, if I'm not mistaken. Mm 
And that means that this center distance should equal this center distance. And they're both 21.324, so I did my math correctly for once. Now these two halves are still set as two different parts and we want it to be one singular ball instead of just two halves of a ball. So we're gonna go to the Boolean tool. We're gonna select both of the halves and that's actually gonna make it so that there's only one part instead of two. So we have our 